Oh man, oh man, oh man. What a mother freaking day. I'm I'm just appalled by the continuous whining and crying and crying and crying and crying. I, I, how many times I'm gonna hear you son of a guns cry about every damn thing, every fucking thing that we do. You guys are bitching and complaining about every damn thing. You guys never gave a damn about all of a sudden. You guys never gave a damn about protecting Matt Ryan. All right. Excuse me. It is Sunday. I got my word in, but I got to say this. All right. I, I did get my I got my word in for the day. So God forgives me. He knows. He knows my heart. He knows my heart. Yes, Lord, he knows my heart, but he knows that I gotta get something off my heart, y'all. I gotta get it off my heart, y'all. Okay? I gotta get it off. Hallelujah. Okay? Shout out to Mr. Red. All right. Your boy, Jew's father, gave me the word today. And look, I I'm sick of it. Father, forgive me. Okay? Father, forgive me. But I'm so sick of you whiny ass bitches. You motherfuckers will find anything. Excuse my, uh, again, I apologize, Mr. Red. I, uh, I, I apologize, Apostle Red, okay? I apologize. Lord, forgive me. Jesus Christ, forgive me. Lord, I am, um, this, this is, I, like, I don't freaking understand. I'm, I'm, this is, this not one person that I'm talking about. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, forgive me. Good graces of life. All right, but I got to preach to you, okay? I, for the life of me, I just can't understand why you son of a guns are never happy with anything. Look at this stupid crap that I'm seeing right now. Take the Falcons name off the team. Tell me as a GM, long-term success in mind. You see 18 to 30 last. And the like, quarterback sacked over 120 times. 36-year-old quarterback. Fourth overall without giving up assets. First current uh, franchise quarterback at four. Number two receivers on the team already good tight end. And you take a tight end slash wide receiver. Shut this stupid shit up. Terrence Holmes, thank you for the five dollar donation. This is exactly if you have a problem with the team, you go buy it. But you just like us, you're a broke son of a gun who ain't got no money but a whole lot of th thing to say. This team has not even stepped foot on the dang gone field, and you guys are already complaining. Are you freaking kidding me? Can the guy catch a damn pass before y'all start saying, oh, we should have took a good dude? Uh, office alignment. Bro, we have an office alignment. We have Jake Matthews, who's a pro bowler. All right, that was an opening in the, on the left guard spot, but we got a center, Matt Hennessy. We got several centers, and Drew Dahl. We got a right guard who's projected to be one of the best offensive linemen in the league and Chris Lindstrom. Caleb McGarry, who's a very fine, he has work to do, but he's a fine offensive lineman. Held down one of the best pass rushes in the league to zero fucking sacks. And we up here talking about, oh, we need, oh, hey, we need to take an open play. Bro, what are you talking about? The guy has not stepped foot on the damn field yet. And we already talking about, oh, Kyle Pitts is the wrong pick. Boy, are you freaking kidding me? Can the guy catch a damn pass before y'all start complaining and co about everything? You guys are never happy with anything. We sign, we get a defense alignment. Guess what? In the draft, we got Vic Beasley. Let the team in sacks. And, and, and he was the most consistent pass rusher outside of Grady Jerry. Y'all wasn't happy with that. Y'all wanted him gone. 
Y'all love Tack McKinley, who never did anything for us. But y'all wanted Vic Beasley gone. He was the most consistent offensive, defensive lineman that we had outside of Grady Jarrett. Y'all wanted him gone. But y'all wanted to keep a damn Tack McKinley, Tweety Bird, who did absolutely nothing. What what are we what 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 is this all about, Falcons fans? Do you think you could do better? Let me know because I am absolutely puzzled. Can do you think do you guys think you can do better? Because I, I'm puzzled. The guy has yet, okay? He has yet to take a, 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 a this dude has absolutely not taken one damn rep in the NFL. Not even the fucking preseason. And you guys are already poo-pooing the idea that this is a great pick. And God, regardless of the fact what happened to Vic Beasley, Vic Beasley was consistent. He gave us at the very least seven sacks every damn season. Deion Jones led the dang gone team tied with Grady Jarrett and sacks were four and a half. Twenty Bird couldn't even play a whole damn two games in a row. Why is it always something? You guys wanted to get rid of Matt Ryan. You guys want to get rid of Julio Jones now. Now you're already saying that Kyle Pitts is going to fail. And he's just a tight end slash wide receiver. The fact that he's a tight end and a wide receiver should be a huge, huge, huge sign. Guess what? Aaron Donald is not just a defensive tackle. Aaron Donald is a defensive lineman. So why did this why does this appeal to a guy like Aaron Donald, but it doesn't appeal to a guy like Kyle Pitts? Let me understand this. Help me understand this. Help me understand it. You guys are so negative. It's absolutely ridiculous. What are we crying about? Why are we crying? Everything. We cry about everything. We're never happy with anything. We go out and get two offensive linemen in the draft. You guys complain about that. We go over here and get Marlon Davis in the, in, in the second round, John Kamiski and all these guys, and you complain about that. You go out and get, you get more weapons than Calvin Ridley, Hayden Hurst, and Kyle Pitts, and you guys complain about that. You sign a guy like Cordero Patterson, Mike Davis, and we're going to run with Quadri Olison, and you guys complain about that. You get a quarterback that has absolutely the, the necessary tools to be, at the very least, a backup and Felipe Franks. What are, what are we talking about, people? Why is it you guys are never happy with anything? And this is just not a shot at one particular person. I'm seeing it everywhere. Nobody's happy with anything. And this is why Arthur Blank, this is why Arthur Blank doesn't give a shit about what you guys feel. And excuse me again, I apologize for my language, but I am sick and tired. Every time I go on Twitter, every time I go on Facebook, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <coughs> it doesn't freaking matter. You guys are never happy with anything. And it's getting to the point for me personally, you may not even see me on Twitter. You may not see me on Instagram because it's absolutely depressing. Every chance, every move that we make, every step that we take, Falcons fans are right there to shit on the idea. It doesn't matter. The guy that you wanted as a franchise quarterback is a third freaking quarterback. He's not even number two. 
in Chicago. And Chicago hasn't had a wide, uh, they haven't had a damn quarterback to pass for 4,000 since 1940-something, bro. He's not even good enough to start for that team. What's going on? It's what's going on? Why am I ranting? Why am I ranting? Okay. People, uh, look, we're just talking about Falcons fans. Just Falcons fans in general. The guys, some people are just never happy. Ungrateful. Atlanta Nation, that's what I'm talking about. Ungrateful. We guys, you guys are so freaking spoiled. It's absolutely sickening. Who the hell are you as a fan to tell somebody or to have any expectations of a championship or not be grateful with the players that have been awarded, been afforded? Like, what the hell have you guys, what the hell do you guys got to be proud of? Who the hell are you to say that Matt Ryan should be gone? Who the hell are you to tell Arthur Blank that he should not do what the hell he want to do? Who the hell are you to say that Kyle Pitts isn't a damn good prospect? Who the hell are you? Tech is 31 other teams. Get the hell on. We don't need you. Bye. Go away. We don't need you. Real Falcons fans don't want you. If you're going to complain about every damn move, go. This is the greatest quarterback in the history of our franchise. One of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history. And we treat him like crap. This is the greatest wide receiver perhaps in the history of the game, Julio Jones, and we treat him like crap. We want Julio gone. We want Matt Ryan gone. And right now, guess what? We don't even want Kyle Pitts. The dude hasn't played a single game, and y'all already poo-pooing on that idea. Every year, this team under uh, underperforms and you guys have absolutely no expectations for the defense. Every freaking year. We're talking about every freaking year. All right? Every damn year. For the last five years under Dan Quinn, this defense has done diddly squat. But you're poo-pooing on the idea of having a guy like Dean Pease, who has a history of performing well and building defenses, you guys don't like that. You guys are already turned on Arthur Smith. He hasn't played one day. He hasn't had one dang preseason game. And you guys are already saying that Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith need to be fired. Why? Because he didn't get the quarterback. He didn't get the guy. Kyle Pitts, if you, if you are a Georgia fan... If you're an SEC fan, have you seen SEC football? You know how special Kyle Pitts is. This dude is unstoppable. This dude is an absolute matchup nightmare. I want to know what you guys think. How far can the Falcons? Can they make it to the playoff? Can they be? Can they win the South? Can they get into the wild card? <coughs> Excuse me. I want to know. But if a lot of people know anything about Kyle Pitts, you know that this guy absolutely destroyed our Bulldogs. This dude is an absolute nightmare. You cannot. Have you guys seen the picture? I'm sure that you guys have seen the picture going around. Well, Frank, not Frank Darby. I want to say Frank Darby. But I love Frank Darby too, all right? But the picture where we're talking about a pretty big guy in Richie Grant. And this good dude looked like he absolutely dwarfs. This dude absolutely dwarfs a guy that's six feet six two. Come on, bro. Come on. Who the heck is going to match up with this dude running a four 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 five? Who in the hell are you going to match up with this guy? He's six six. 
240 pounds. And I'm sure that the Falcons may put another 5 or 10 pounds on him. Who the hell is going to match up with this guy, bro? The way that he jumps. He runs a 4 freaking 4 as a wide receiver tight end. He lines up at every position on the field. On every position on the field, this guy has lined up as a receiver, a tight end, a slot, an X, a Y. Look, this man has done everything. Yet we are already poo-pooing the idea of this guy being a great, great, great player. At this point, it just becomes, and that's the unfortunate truth, is that they're saying you are ungrateful son of a guns. And and, and Ghost Peppers, you in the line of nation, y'all spitting some absolute facts in this book. Absolute facts in this thing. We're talking about we're, we're oh my God. It, it's it like I said, it's absolutely sad to see what we're seeing right now. A lot of these people, all you guys, uh, uh, most of these people who really are quote-unquote Falcons fans, I can tell you guys have not been football fans. And most of you guys may be 20 years old, and you probably, the only reason why you became a football fan is because you watch, you watch your uncle play Madden. You watch your, little, your older brother play Madden. And, you, and he probably, you know, watched the Falcons every once in a while. But a lot of you guys have not been football fans long because you say some of the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. Mr. Motivator was good. Fred Butts was good. And this is not it. it, it again, this is not targeted at everybody, but it's to the point where it's it's just unfreaking believable to see so many. We're talking about so many Falcons fans. These guys, it is over. The draft is over. We're never going to get this guy. Do you see what's happening in Green Bay right now? These guys are signing every damn quarterback in the universe right now because their first round pick isn't ready to be a quarterback. Whatever happened to the great, okay? What happened to that great wide receiver that everybody said he was better than Julio Odell Beckham? What happened to him? What happened to that guy? Whatever happened to that guy? Please tell me, okay? Terrence Holmes, fifth all-time worst defense, but we ignore that. Bro, that's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. These dudes set an absolute NFL record for the fifth highest passing yards given up in the in, in NFL history. The fifth more passing yards in NFL history, and we sitting up here talking about we need to we need to do this. Well, it was uh, it was eight other picks in that draft, Falcons fans. It was eight other picks in that draft. And you guys are complaining about the number one pick, who is absolutely the best. I don't give a damn what nobody say. This guy's the best player athlete in his. He's the best player in the draft. I don't believe in Trevor Lawrence. You guys have always said that. And I could easily be wrong. Like I've been wrong plenty of other times. But I do not believe in sunshine. I don't. I think it's a, he's going to play in a gimmicky offense that Urban Meyer is going to destroy another team, much like um, what's, what's the dude that was a Philadelphia Eagles um, fat dude. I, I forget his name, but he, he uh, dang, Philadelphia. He came into the league, coming from college, thought he was going to bring that little gimmicky ass spread offense to the NFL, and the shit failed miserably. <clears throat> Mike, stop giving your power to these fake fans. Look, bro, that's what I do. I rant. So the hell with that idea. <laughs> 
No. I, I, it was a it was Kelly, but I, I forgot his first name. But Chip Kelly. Chip, okay? Chip Kelly. When they bring these little gimmicky-ass offense to the NFL, that crap never freaking works. It never works because this is not a prissy. It all comes down to it. This is the man. This is the land of the beast. The NFL is the land of the beast. The man of the man. The best of the best. And when you bring that gimmicky bull crap to the NFL, it never works out. So Urban Meyer, he's going to bring that crap to Jacksonville. And yeah, he might have a year. Man, he, he might have a two. He may have a three. But guess what? It still comes down to can you put a hat on a hat? Can you can you draft the guys? Can you draft guys like Aaron Donald? Can you draft guys like Grady Jarrett, who are absolute beasts? These guys are absolute men. Can you get, draft the offense? Can you put together an offensive line that's going to smash? Can you can you build a running game? Can you create chemistry? Because passing the ball and these 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 RPOs and all this crap that doesn't work. The league has caught up with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson has to be a quarterback now. It doesn't work. It will never continuously work. You will have an athlete. It takes at least two to three years for the NFL to figure a quarterback out. And now you see him right now that he is trying his best to become a quarterback. Lamar Jackson is, has to be forced to be a quarterback because he can run for 100 yards. He can run for 200 yards in the game. But guess what? If you can't pass the ball in his league, if you cannot be a consistent passer in his league, then you're no good for your team. Shanahan, that's a great, great, great point. Excellent point. Atlanta Nation, that's another thing. This is the reason why Kyle Shanahan is drafting another freaking quarterback. How many damn quarterbacks this guy done had? I done see at least four quarterbacks for San Francisco line up for San Francisco, and all those guys suck. And now he here he is in year what? Year four of his contract, he's drafting Trey Lance in hopes of him finding his right to so if in, in another two years, if Trey Lance doesn't, you know, pan out the way he hopes it is, this is another fail opportunity. This is another failure. So this is the reason why we say that we have to keep these players as long as we possibly can. Because most of these guys don't pan out. But at least give them a damn play. Let them play one preseason game. Let them play two NFL. Let them have a game before we start calling people to bust. Matt Ryan, of course. Matt Ryan has made so many offensive. Look, man, I, I look, he done made at least four or five guys. All right. Matt Ryan has made at least four or five guys that I, right off the top, head coaches. We're talking about head coaches. This is what Matt Ryan has done. Stop disrespecting this man. The disrespect for Matt Ryan is unimaginable. I, I cannot fathom how you guys sit with a straight face if you know the game. This is, this is the thing that I don't get. I understand that these we got some ignorant fans and some ignorant, y'all don't even get the real word. Y'all don't get the whole word. Y'all just ignorant. Ignant. I-G-N-A-N-T. Ignant. Y'all just ignorant. Period. How are you as a football fan can sit there with a straight face and say, you want to get rid of Matt Ryan? When this defense looks like horse shit. This defense has looked like absolute garbage since the 2016 season. We were ranked 27th in the league. The only reason why we were made it to the Super Bowl, and let's just be real, is because Matt Ryan was the MVP. He carried that team to the Super Bowl. 
He's the only reason why we made it that far. Because Dan Quinn's defense absolutely sucked. Robert Alford has one of the worst season in his history. But everybody always say he was good. The only reason why he got that is because he had a couple of pick six, a couple of interceptions here and there. And he was the, at the time, he was the best thing that we had outside of Desmond Trufant. And the truth, I end up getting hurt. But outside of that, yeah, got to stop. When are we going to hold this defense accountable? When are we going to hold Deion Jones, Grady Jarrett, those guys accountable? When are we going to hold these shitty-ass offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators accountable for the stupid game plans that we've seen over and over again? When are we going to hold these special team guys who are telling? these? We saw live, okay, the Dallas Cowboy game where we see the special team coach on the sideline. He told those guys specifically, do not fall on the ball. Those guys stood there and looked at the ball. And we're trying to complain. We're trying to complain about Matt Ryan didn't score again. He scored 90. The, the offense accounted for 9, 39 points in the game, and we still freaking lost. How do you score 39 points and you still lose? How do you score 39 points? And these guys, have, you have a three point. You have a three possession lead in the fourth quarter, and you still lose. It's coaching, bro. How did this happen? So the fact of the matter, this is one of the major reasons why I've said time and time and time and time again that I am Vic Beasley number one supporter because the defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn, did not put these guys in position to succeed. One of the biggest and most, the worst moves that the Falcons did, all right? And I, I'm telling you right now, one of the worst decisions that the Falcons made on that defensive side of the ball was not standing behind Rasheed Hageman. Rasheed Hageman did the dirty work for this defensive line. He allowed the White Freeney to have one-on-one -on -one matchups. He allowed Grady Jarrett to have those one-on-one -on -one matchups. He allowed... Vic Beasley to have those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Why? Because he was a big-ass space eater. 6'6", 340 pounds of a man. He allowed those guys to roam free. He allowed Keon O'Neal not to get hit by these big tight ends and offensive linemen. He allowed Deion Jones to just absolutely run free and wreak havoc on the NFL. This is one of the worst decisions that the Falcons did and they never replaced Rasheed Hakeman. The small, intricate details of football. Dan Quinn wanted a fast, light NASCAR defense, and that is absolutely not the way to build a team. You got to have these animals. You got to have these manimals. You got to have these beasts. You got to have these guys that's going to smack you in the face and spit on you. You got to have these guys that's going to st stomp on your damn finger. You got to have these guys that are going to smack your mama and tell, it, tell her to sit the hell down. You got to have these types of guys. This man said Rasheed Hateman barely played. Man, you need to, Elijah, I, I, I implore you to hit Google search. I, I implore you to hit Google search. All right, go back to 2016 and you will see what Rasheed Rashid Hateman done. All right, this is what I'm talking about. Instead of you motherfuckers coming up in here with this bullshit, do some fucking research. Because like I said before, you don't get you you what what you get here, you get the fastest stacks in the truth. This is what I do. This is what Atlanta Falcons Nation do. We don't come with no bull crap.
You come with the truth. We come with the truth, fun. Got to learn the game before you even know what the hell you're talking about. You get ate up in here. You get eaten alive up in Atlanta Falcons Nation, Mad Mike Sports. You don't come with your facts. You don't come with that stats. You're going to get ate alive up here. This is a terror dome, bro. Man, look, a lot of people on this, this is where, this is why I love Atlanta Falcons Nation. Because like I said, we have these shows where we allow you guys, we tell you guys to come on and share your opinion, and you guys have taught us things. We're not like these all, all other creators where we try to hog all the spotlight. Bro, we ask you guys to come on. If you know your game, bro, if you know the game, guess what? Come on. Show me something. Tell me what I'm missing. Tell me when me, Jew, Kevin, K Styles, when look, tell us when we wrong. Tell us something that we don't know. But I guarantee you we do. Why? Because we work as a team together to get the facts, the stats, and the motherfucking truth. Eliza Ford, you again, you are stupid son of a gun. Again, this is what's wrong with these new fans. These new fans don't know nothing about football. All they know is highlights, dunks, and goddamn, uh, you know, being nutmeg and fucking uh, on ESPN. That's all the fuck y'all know. That's all you guys know. You don't know the small, intricate details, eating up blocks with people like Grady Jarrett. Grady Jackson, excuse me. Grady uh, Vince Wilfork. Tony Siragusa. Harvey Dahl, these animals. What it takes for a guy like Leon Lett for the Dallas Cowboys to sit up and just, just, just eat up box. Guys like John Randall. Boy, you better get, boy, you better come with your facts up in here. You get ate alive up in here, boy. This is the, the land of the absolute best of the best. And we're talking about fans that know they shit. So you better come, you, you better come correct when you come up in here. Rasheed Hateman did the dirty work. And this is a lot of you guys that don't know nothing about no damn dirty work. And that's why you like prissy ass players like Odell Beckham. And priestly ass Tom Brady, who get all the credit for what everybody else is doing. If it wasn't for Adam Vinatieri hitting those three kicks in his first three Super Bowl appearance, there would be no Tom Brady. If it wasn't for that that defense of the Patriots, sixteen out of his twenty years. This guy has a, had a top 15, top 15, top 15 defense. 16 out of his 20 years, this guy has had a top rank defense. And let me get my brother, I love him to death, Devontae, a.k.a. Cookie by Nature, a special shout out. This brother is on the rise. He graduated today, so everybody right now, give your boy Cookie a congratulations for doing and, cre uh, you know, just, just having a, a great opportunity, you know, in, in, in front of himself. He's, he's a huge basketball guy, but I mean, I'm telling you, man, basketball, this dude is, this dude is absolutely brilliant when it comes to basketball. He's, <laughs> that's my little bro, but he's put me on game to a lot of stuff when it comes down to basketball. He does Atlanta Hawks stuff, GSHM, as well as Dream, the Atlanta Dream. He's gonna be doing some great things in the future. So you guys follow him on Cookie by Nature on Twitter. But congratulations, bro. But you guys, I I, I, I am I really take it's it's when you even look at the the when you look at guys like Lawrence Taylor. 
Nobody talks about the defensive tackles. Nobody talks about the defensive linemen that allow him to have those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Nobody talks about that. Jonathan Babineau is another guy. He did the small details. He was an undersized defensive tackle, and he was good against the run. He was good against the pass. The small, intricate details. All people remember when it comes down to, look, this is another thing. When the last time Von Miller did anything? Now, anybody want to be, let's be fucking real. Let's be goddamn real. Let's be real. When the last time Von Miller did anything? Since all of those weapons, all those guys on his team, what happened to Von Miller? Let's be real. Y'all want to be real? Y'all want to praise everybody else? Everybody wants to everybody wants to praise everybody else, but no one wants to praise this Atlanta Falcons. DeMarcus Ware, another one that created mismatches. You could not double team Von Miller because you had a DeMarcus Ware. You had the guy um I, I forget, Maurice Maurice something. I forget. He played for Jacksonville also. You had those guys eating up blocks and allowing Von Miller to have those one-on-ones. This is a team game. It's always been about a team game. But when you got special guys like Von Miller, you got to put those team guys around him. You got to put those Rasheed Hagemans. You got to put those Derek Wolfs around him to eat up those types of blocks. You got to put those Vince Wilfork, the Gray J Jackson. You got to put those... You know, that 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 endemic can sue alongside Aaron Donald. So Aaron Donald can do what he does. So you guys that have cut look, bro. A lot of Fox Nation is where it's at. Atlanta Fox Nation is where it's at. You guys have to you must and i'm telling you you must do your homework you will get eaten alive dog don terry pope gray jerry has one of his best seasons in atlanta and those were a dynamic duo until thomas the stupid off decided he wanted to not pay this man eight million dollars all the dude asked was eight million dollars and he didn't want to do that those guys were a dynamic duo. Trey Henderson, that's a, that's another one. We're talking about guys. That's why the, the the when you look at the Saints defensive line, those guys don't have great names. Those guys are pretty much some some some, some hand in the dirt, eat dirt, nasty son of a guns. But they got one guy in Cam Jordan that is special. So all you do is put guys that could do the dirty work for him and let Cam have those one-on-ones with a guy like Caleb McGarry. Patrick Kearney is another one. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's so many, it's so many other guys that deserve, deserve so much respect. We got to stop praising all these, you know, these guys that everybody remember. Everybody's going to remember a Von Miller. Everybody's going to remember a Khalil Mack. Everybody's going to remember a Lawrence Taylor. Everybody's going to remember uh, even a, a, you know, Michael Strahan. Everybody remembers these guys. But where are the guys that really do all the dirty work? They get, you know, they, they, they eat up their space. They create one-on-one -on -one opportunities. They, du they get the double teams. Who remember Bob Christian? Who remembers... A guy like, like um, even Moose Johnston. I'm talking about guys that you probably don't even remember. Who remembers those guys? Who remembers a Fred McCrary? Who remembers a Ove Mughaley? Do you guys know them? Ask those guys. Ask a running back how special those fullbacks were for them. Hmm. 
it's getting mighty quiet in here because you guys don't know a lot of I don't see all the hatred in here now. Uh, we up here naming names that y'all probably don't even have a clue who the hell I'm talking about. Hey, man, it's a lot of people in here. All right, this is Atlanta Falcons Nation. We got fans all over the world, man. If you ain't got to be from Atlanta to appreciate this team. You ain't got to be a Falcon fan to even appreciate this channel, Atlanta Falcons Nation. Tyler Shelvin, guys, we're talking about, you know, Brandon Williams. Pop, pop, people don't know who Brandon Williams is for the Baltimore Ravens. Y'all, y'all don't even know who these guys. Danny Shelton, these guys eat up so much space, allow the defensive ends. Who know anything about your boy, Cameron Hayward? Who knows about Cameron Hayward that allows, okay? Who allows T.J. Watt to do his thing? Do anybody want to give Cameron Hayward his, 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 his flowers? Anybody want to get Cam Hayward his flowers? Hmm. Mighty quiet in here. It's mighty quiet. I don't see all the hate. That I, we, we, when we start talking about real football, y'all get really, really quiet. I wonder why is that? Moose Johnson was one of the main reasons why Emmitt Smith was able to run so cleanly, so free. Larry Allen, Eric Williams. Those guys go unnamed. Nobody remembers the linemen who do the dirty work. Nobody remembers the fullback who really does all the work. He's the eyes for the running back and allows the running back to do his things. These are the small, intricate details in football that no one goes. Why do you think everybody love Muhammad Sanu so much? Why do you think people love Muhammad Sanu? Muhammad Sanu allowed Julio to just be clean, bro. Julio didn't have to worry about people smacking him. Because guess what? One of the best, uh, one of the best catches in, 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 in the NFL history, the catch and run, was Julio Jones. He took the slant when we playing Green Bay. He took the uh, slant, and guess what? Guess who got the block downfield that allowed Julio Jones to get into the end zone? That was Muhammad Sanu. But everybody is going to remember Julio Jones took it to the house. And Julio Jones is a terrific player, not taking anything away from him. But this is what we're talking about, the small, intricate details that the, football, that the Falcons just forgot about. They wanted to be prissy. They wanted to be fast. They wanted to be physical. Without the physical part, they want to be fast and small. Let's just be real. This guy wanted to be fast and small. Patrick DeMarco is another. Bill Freilich. Who remembers Bill Freilich? Huh. Muhammad Sanu. Jake Matthews. Why Jake Matthews is one of the highest paid tackles in the league? Because he's physical and he's freaking nasty. He's one of the most consistent tackles in the league. Of course, everybody makes mistakes. Of course, he makes mistakes in the wrong time at, at, at you know, a lot of times. But that's football. But you got to have these guys are freaking nasty. And like I said, Tom McClure. Who the hell remembers? Who the hell remembers Todd McClure? He's one of the greatest offensive linemen in Falcons history. I think he's the. I think honestly, the, uh, I'm gonna be real, and this is just a hot take for me. I believe Todd McClure is a Hall of Famer. Look what that man did. Look at his career, and look at the great offenses that he was in charge of. This guy is a Hall of Fame center. 
And that's just my opinion. But he will never get the respect because fans don't give a damn. The, all they care about is touchdowns and interceptions. One of the greatest offensive linemen to ever do it. Todd McClure. He gets no respect. Cornelius Bennett. Do you guys remember Cornelius Bennett? Probably not. This is the reason why a lot of our guys, Shane Dronet, Chuck Smith, Patrick Kearney, John Abraham, all these guys are un, these guys don't get any respect. We were a dirty, nasty, physical team, and a lot of our stuff was not popular. It wasn't, nobody gave us any, nobody gave us a damn shot. Nobody gave us a goddamn chance to beat the Minnesota Vikings. Nobody in the world. They said we was going to get blown out. But those guys played physical. Those guys whooped their asses. Let's just be, that's, that, that's called a spade a spade. The Falcons whooped that ass. And they could not recover. They wanted to play a prissy style of football. And Falcons went in their territory and whooped that ass. That's what happened. The Falcons whooped that pretty ass. They spanked that pretty ass. That's what they did. The Falcons whooped that ass. Went in their home and whooped that ass. Okay? So we need to get back to this physical football. Having guys like a Rasheed Hakeman, having guys like Grady Jarrett, having guys that, that these guys are just physical, they're nasty, more Muhammad Sanu type guys who are energetic, who, who just want to get into fights. This is what we need. This is why Arthur Smith, Terry Fontenot, have my absolutely... <laughs> stop, Maggie. I ain't stop. All right. <laughs> it's Sunday. <laughs> but we need that dirty, nasty, okay? Dirty, nasty football. That's what we need. We need to get back to what our roots were. And that is physical, dirty, nasty football. You're damn right, ATL Leo. And like I said, let's give these guys a chance before we shit on them. Let's give these guys an absolute chance to put this team together before we start bashing Arthur Smith. Let's give him a chance. Let's give Terry Fontenot a chance before we start bashing him. Let's give him a chance. Let's give Dean Pease a chance to build a defense. Let's give him a chance. What is it gonna hurt? We were already four and 12. We already don't have a championship to our name. Wasn't it, what's it going to hurt? It's not going to hurt a thing. Let's give these guys a chance before we absolutely crap on everything before it starts. And then you start looking like a damn fool. Because I still remember all you Falcons, all these Matt Ryan haters. As soon as they got their restructure, you ran and you ran and nobody came back to the channel. Y'all talk big shit. And then when Matt Ryan got that restructure, you ran and you ran and you never came back.
Yeah. Oh, I don't let. I, I remember everything. <laughs> I remember everything. We remember everything. Oh, we keep them receipts. Believe that. That's why a lot of these content creators running and they trying to pretend as if they didn't say anything. Oh, we keep the receipts. We don't run from our mistakes. We don't run from our words. I don't delete my tweets. I don't delete my videos. I don't try to act like I didn't say anything. I'm right here every day with you guys. I'm right here every day. We man up to what we did wrong. We give you guys not only our standpoint, but we bring on educated guys who educated women and men like Tori McElhaney who comes on. She does this, all right? This is inside information that we give you guys. We give you inside information. We give you educated information from the people who work for the Atlanta Falcons. We give you guys who've actually played the game so you can take what we say and really take it in and understand the game the way it needs to be understood. Because ESPN, Fox, all the other guys, most of these guys who are even Falcons content creators, they all have narratives. We're not here to give you a narrative. We're not here to paint a picture for you. We're not here to say everything is all good. We're not here to say that, oh, one day we're gonna, you know, we're gonna win five championships in a row. I'm not here to give you guys or sell you guys a dream. We're only here to provide you with nothing but the facts, the stats, and the truth. That's what Atlanta Falcons Nation is about. You're not gonna give it anywhere else. You're not gonna get it anywhere else. This is what Atlanta Falcons Nation is all about. So again, before I leave you guys, remember, I am not an expert. I'm a passionate fan who does his homework. I'm a passionate fan, just like you, who goes to the source. I don't just take a guy's word that has and shares the same vision that I do. I will debate anybody, anybody, I guarantee you, most of them don't want any parts of me. Most of them don't want any parts of myself, Jew, Kevin, because they know that we got back up. They know for a fact that AFN is going to come with them stats, the facts, and the truth. They know that. That's why they avoid us. They don't want these problems. They don't want these problems. Because like I said before, I'm willing to sit down to anyone and debate exactly what I say with anybody. And I guarantee you, I will come out on top. They don't want that. And like I said before, this ain't bragging. This is about me being educated by guys at the Atlanta Sports Unlimited, Tom, Dave, Terrence Mathis, all those guys at Atlanta Sports Unlimited. They've taught me so much. Guys like Chuck Smith, who absolutely gets no love from the Atlanta Falcons fan base, Chuck Smith is a freaking legend. Call my phone, let's do it. Bro, you don't want no problems.
You might, I'm, I guarantee you, you're going to end up crying at the end of the bait. You're going to be whining and crying. You don't want these problems. You better ask who I am, bro. You don't want these problems. You better step up to a rookie because you ain't got no rookie right here, bro. I ain't, I ain't no rook. I was born and bred in this game. I was born and bred as a football, baseball, sports fanatic. You don't want these problems. I guarantee you. I had your ass stuttering like you had got them, like you stole something from your goddamn police department. You don't want these problems. Y'all better tell this man, they don't want these problems. Everybody, they, they seem all big and bad, but when you get on this live show, you better bring it. You better bring it. I've been endorsed by real NFL players. I've been endorsed by real writers. I've been endorsed by real Falcons fans. So when I say that, you don't want these problems, believe me, you don't want these problems from AFN. Jew, Kevin, Magnus. You don't want these problems. And I can, like I said before, I'm going to end it on this. They ain't talking about why we don't debate because they scared. I just said it. They don't want no problems with me. They don't want no problem with us. They don't want any problems with AFN. Okay? They don't want any problems with AFN. All right? So we're going to uh, we're going to allow people to come on again all right every time we say okay let's 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 do a live and i see you same people in here talking about y'all want to debate me y'all want to debate me and y'all want to debate us soon we open the lines y'all same motherfuckers be sitting in the damn chat doing nothing so don't act big and bad now don't try to act tough now because everybody's seeing it because we've done this over and over again and everybody else sit they asses who are talking all this crap now, so they want to debate me. You same motherfuckers be sitting y'all ass in the chat, looking at your damn phones, trying to pretend like y'all hard. So if y'all want a piece of this, if you want a piece of Mad Mike, if you want a piece of Jew Talk Sports, Kevin, aka K Styles, please bring it. If you want a piece, a piece, a twisted teeth, please bring it. We will lie. We will let you talk. Won't say a word. Won't interrupt. We we will let you get your points out. But like I said, if you think you want this, hit up Miss Maggie on IG, Twitter, Facebook. I guarantee you, you will never want another debate. And I don't want to hear you talking about you. You admire me and all that stuff. You wanted it. All right. Y'all wanted this. Y'all wanted it. I don't want to hear at the end of the debate when y'all hurt you, when we hurt y'all, when we hurt your feelings. Don't talk about you admire us and all that crap. Because y'all, you wanted it. You wanted it. All right. Period. Point blank. Atlanta Falcons Nation is what we do. Yeah, like I said, man, we don't open. Everybody can attest to this. Everybody can attest to this. We go live after every game. We go. We have an after show, even what seven, uh, seven o'clock, seven eight o'clock during the season. These same people that have watched our live shows, these same people sit and they look at their phone while everybody else, ATM, Alex, LS. So many other guys have come on over and over and over again, and we beg people to come on and speak their piece. Eric McDowell. Eric McDowell. Just open the line, bro. You, I move when I'm I move when I move, okay? 
You just stay tuned. I move when I move. Atlanta Falcon Nation move when we move. And that's all I got to say about that. You guys have a blessed day. You guys have a blessed day. But I'm telling you, I guarantee to you, all that YFM Migo, Black Migo, all that huffing and puffing that the Migos be doing, you gonna, I guarantee you, you're going to be leaving with tears. And with that being said, your boy Man Mike is out. Black Migo. Again, dude, all you're going to do is huff and buff and cry and talk about how you, this person is. You're going to come with an opinion with nothing to back it up. So if you don't have any stats, if you don't have anything to back up those words, all right, it's all good. But like I said, man, if you really want this smoke, stay tuned. We'll let you know when we want to get you on. But until that, you guys, you guys have a blessed day. All right. You guys, if you haven't had a word, get your word in, man, because it's trying times, trying days. And I just want everybody to be the best version of themselves. You know what I'm saying? Eat well, pray well, treat each other well. But like I said, Black Migo, this man up here, this man up here using words. Man, were you fucking 12 or something? This man 12. Bro, <laughs> he emotional. Bro, I'm mad Mike. What are you, what are you saying? I'm mad Mike. <laughs> like I said, oh my God. With that being said, man, this dude right here, this man is up here most. This man don't, this man don't rape goddamn 15 messages in the last two seconds, and he talking about we emotional. <laughs> oh my God, bro. Oh my God. Oh, good. With that being said, I'm gone, baby. Peace.